Hello and welcome to another episode of Katie the Science Lady. I'm Mrs. Jacobson and today's topic is adaptations. So let's learn together. Okay friends, today it's time to start talking about adaptations. Um, what you can see in the name is the word adapt, which means to change in response to something. Now, this picture here, we have a, a frog and it's on some sort of wood branch or tree. Um, and we notice that it is very, very close in texture and color to this tree. So it is blending in. Um, and that is known as camouflage. And camouflage is one of the examples of adaptation that we will go over today. So adaptations, they come about as the result of mutations. Remember, mutation is a change in a DNA sequence and it causes new traits to pop up. Um, it happens randomly. And adaptations help an organism survive in their environment. Adaptations, by kind of definition, are helpful. Um, if it's not helpful, it's not adapting well to the environment. So um, usually those organisms die out if they have an unhelpful mutation. So adaptation is kind of another name for a helpful mutation, to be honest. However, they may no longer be beneficial. So at one point, um, a trait could have been seen as an adaptation, but now it doesn't really have a purpose anymore. Um, for example, our um, appendixes. Our appendix may be the remnants of an old organ or used to help us digest our food better, but we don't need it anymore. So it's no longer helpful to us, but we can still call it an old adaptation. Um, although typically we call them vestigial structures at that point if there's no purpose anymore. One example of adaptations um, as a result of mutation would be the peppered moth. So if you look here, the white moth or the white speckled moth here is the original. Um, a mutation or a mutated version produces this black or ebony color. Um, it's actually kind of pretty, it shimmers, but it's black. Now these peppered moths, they lived on the trunks of trees that were white. Um, and so for a long time, that mutated version died out. Um, it wasn't a helpful adaptation. It caused them to die. Um, but then <laughs> the, um, there was a lot of smoke that came into the air um, due to the Industrial Revolution, and the tree trunks turned black. Once that happened, those black moths blended in, and then that coloring became advantageous, um, and that adaptation became very, very helpful. So then the white moths started dying out more uh, because they would be easily caught by predators. So adaptations and whether it's helpful or harmful does depend on the environment. Um, and we did talk about that in natural selection and talked about fitness in the environment as well. So we have a couple different types of adaptations. The first that I want to talk about are anatomical adaptations, um, and they are physical changes to body features. And these are the kind of the easy ones to see. Things like specialized teeth, whether they're flat or pointed um, for either chewing on different plants or chewing on meat. Remember, flat teeth like a horse has, that would be for chewing plants. And pointed teeth like a um, tiger or a wolf would be for chewing meat. Claws would help either for defense or for ripping apart meat or digging. Um, and camouflage is one of the biggest anatomical adaptations that we see frequently, especially in the animal kingdom. Um, like we see in the back of this, this slide here, the frog is representing camouflage or it's displaying camouflage as one of its adaptations to survive better in its environment. Over here, we've got um, a picture of some horse teeth. Um, and this is a carnivore, so that would not be a horse. But over here, we have our horse. Um, it's got some flat molars. They're pretty flat. So it doesn't need to be ripping and tearing into its meal. It's just going to grind um, that the plant matter down that it's eating. Over here in our canine, which it looks like it's a, um, a wolf of some kind, we've got incisors, which are for ripping into meat, canines, which are there to hold it in place. And they do also have some molars at the back of their mouth, but mostly they're specialized to eat meat. Over here, I'm looking at Darwin's finches. We talked about Darwin um, when we mentioned natural selection. And he noticed that one species of bird, um, finches in particular, they had changed over time um, based on what they ate. So wherever they were on those islands, they may have had different food sources. So different beaks were needed in order to get to those food sources. 
whether they're big beaks, small beaks, pointy beaks, or flat beaks, um, that help them survive in their environment. So they adapted many different types and style of beak. Another type of adaptation we um, talk about, again, still anatomical, is mimicry. And this is, I think, one of my favorite types of adaptation. It's very cool. Um, and it's when an organism, quote unquote, copies another's markings or structure. And what it really is, is that a mutation caused a particular marking. And then that marking was advantageous. So it kept happening um, and it got passed on to the offspring of that organism. They can be used to intimidate or trick predators. Um, and here's an example here. We have the monarch butterfly. Uh, monarch butterflies are poisonous. Um, some people don't know that, but they are poisonous, which means that organisms don't want to eat that. Animals don't want to eat them because they could get sick. This butterfly over here called the viceroy butterfly is not poisonous, but they look almost identical. Um, so this is an example of mimicry because the markings are very similar, which can trick predators into not eating the viceroy butterfly. Another example here, we've got several examples. Um, it might shock you to think that none of these are snakes, but they all look like snakes. These are all caterpillars um, of different varieties and different species. And they have kind of evolved or had these mutations that have changed over time. And they actually look like snakes. This one up here is shockingly as close to a snake, but it is not a snake. And again, it's there to fend off predators or trick them into thinking, hey, this animal that I'm looking at, I don't want to eat it because it might bite me and hurt me when it's really just a caterpillar. So mimicry is very, very cool. We have also physiological adaptations, and these are happening inside the body. So these are not as easy to view, um, but they're still as important. They can be part of an organism's hormones um, or brain processes. It's just an internal type of adaptation. Um, and some of these examples would include things like hibernation, where we have some animals like bears will hibernate. Um, they gather lots and lots of food, and then they will kind of shut down their bodies a little bit for the winter so that they can survive in cold temperatures for long periods of time. Um, we have adrenaline, which is our fight or flight response. It is a um, hormone that is going to, well, it's, yeah, essentially a hormone that is going to cause us to um, increase our blood pressure, increase our um, pulse, um, and kind of get blood flow circulating so that we can make a decision to fight or run away. It gets us really pumped up um, in response to some sort of stimulus, usually something that our brain is perceiving as life-threatening. Um, if you get scared, sometimes you have a spike of adrenaline because your body doesn't know what's scaring you. And it says, hey, you either need to fight this thing off or we need to run away. Um, and that's why you'll feel kind of ooh, like your, your chest will get all tight um, and you might get like tingly or you might feel like a sensation going through your body. That's your adrenaline um, and your adrenaline response. Venom is a physiological adaptation. Um, it causes blood to clot. So if you get bit by a snake, it causes your blood to clot most of the time, um, which incapacitates the prey. So humans aren't normally prey for uh, snakes, but birds or mice could be. And if they can incapacitate them or keep them from running away, they get to eat their meal much easier. So that's um, one that's pretty easy to, to at least think of why it would be beneficial. Um, so venom is definitely beneficial because it helps you catch your prey. Down here, we've got a bear, an example of hibernation. Um, we also have venom. So in case you've never seen um, a snake with venom dripping from it, it actually comes out of those, those fangs kind of near the front of their mouth. And you can collect venom by having them bite into like a, like almost like a plastic level, like plastic layer in a cup. Um, you can look that up on YouTube if or somewhere else if you need to, but it's pretty cool to watch. A little scary, but pretty cool. One of the last types of adaptations we'll talk about today are behavioral adaptations. Um, and these typically have to deal with mating. So it typically is a process that allows an organism to attract a mate um, so that it can reproduce. Um, so these are kind of easy to observe, at least, and you may find videos of them online. So these would include mating calls, migration, um, or fish swimming in a school. So fish swimming together would be protection for them um, so they don't get picked off by predators because they look bigger. Um, they look like there's a lot of them. So that can be kind of safety in numbers. Migration would be moving for better weather. 
So birds migrate, um, fish migrate, and they do this to make sure that they have good conditions to have their babies in. Again, the goal is always survive and reproduce. That's the goal here. So if it doesn't let you survive long enough to reproduce, it probably doesn't help you um, evolve or doesn't contribute to evolution because that is the goal to survive and reproduce. Mating calls. Um, if you did not know, crickets chirp because they are trying to attract a mate. Um, the chirping that crickets do, it's not them just talking to each other. It's them calling and saying like, hello, ladies, I'm ready for you. Um, so they're trying to attract a mate um, by having either a loud call, letting people know they're there, well, letting grasshoppers or crickets know they're there. But that's a type of mating call. Um, so that's your fun fact of the day. Again, we have an example here of migration. We have birds that fly south for the winter. Um, we have our crickets, which do mating calls. And then we have our fish swimming in a school, again, for protection, safety, and other reasons. All right, let's go ahead and recap what we've learned today about adaptations. Adaptations are the result of mutation, which means that a new allele for a particular trait has been created. Adaptations by their very nature are beneficial or at one point were beneficial to a creature. Now, whether a adaptation is beneficial or not depends on their environment. So it's a measure of their fitness. So let's give an example here. You could have um, two different moths. One could be white and one could be black. Let's say that the black colored moth is a mutation. So that color changes a mutation. If those moths tend to live on white trees, the white colored moths are going to blend in well, which means that the black coloring is not beneficial. They're going to get eaten. So while it's a mutation, it's not necessarily an adaptation because it doesn't help them fit their environment well. Now, if they lived in dark colored um, areas where maybe those trees are dark brown most of the year, they would blend in very well, the black moths. The white moths would not blend in well anymore and would not be very fit for their environment. That darker coloration would be an adaptation because it's helped them survive in their environment. So kind of, again, by its nature, adaptations are beneficial. Now, this does not mean that they are always beneficial. What used to be helpful may no longer be helpful anymore. And in the same vein, not every body feature is an adaptation. So it's, we have to be careful not to fall into this trap where we think that everything on our body is an adaptation. Um, that's not necessarily the case because sometimes it was just a mutation um, that just kind of was neutral. So it doesn't always have to be an adaptation if it exists. So it's only an adaptation if it is a mutation and if it was beneficial or is beneficial to the environment that the organism lives in. That's it for us today. Please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel for more science videos. And as always, I hope you had fun. I hope you learned something. And I'll see you later.